But I think people are going to be really surprised and interested about what his relationship to Elizabeth is. And they have a very complicated, complicated relationship. It has elements of light and elements of darkness in it. We wanted a character that represented the sky in the same way that Big Daddy represented the ocean. You look at the sort of the, the, the mouth and the tube, looks sort of like a pilot's uh, mess. He's got these, you know, the leather and the, and the bird-like head. We really wanted to make him feel like he belonged in the sky, like he was, he, he was, he owned that, he owned Columbia, you know? But he's also part of Columbia. There was so much speculation. There was like a meta conversation going on about what Irrational was doing. And I really wanted to play with people's expectations a little bit. And I wanted to sort of go to see and be like, oh yeah, okay, they're doing this. I get it. That's what I expected. And then surprise people. And uh, so it was a little, sort of a little meta joke. We, we had, you know, a little fun we had with, with our audience. Uh, but it also, I think, set up the visual thematic change as well. You know, all these, you know, these murky blues and purples and greens going to when you get knocked out that window to the bright light blues and yellows of, 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 and reds of Columbia. We're really focused on building a relationship that is earned. People being thrown into a crucible is one of those things together. People sacrificing for each other. Those are the things that I think start building relationships very quickly between people. And honestly, Liz and Booker are gonna go through a really shitty time together. More importantly, in the same way that in Bioshock 1, I didn't want to have, have Atlas betray the, the character as much as I wanted to betray the gamer. In the same way, it's really important to me that not just Booker builds a relationship with Elizabeth, but the player builds a relationship with Elizabeth. How do you make a core game that removes layers of interface? You know, Killzone just has the gun we have the other hand too, you know, doing, doing, you know, using your powers with the other hand, but it has to feel really good and it has to feel really awesome. But I think the Killzone guys did a really, did a really amazing thing with that because it, all of a sudden it's like, wow, that works. That's cool. That, and it feels, and it adds something to the experience, which is most important. It's not just checking a box. It seems to have all the, all the benefits of something like an iPad, like it has a touch screen, has a back screen, but it has a dual analog stick. You can play a shooter on a handheld, a real shooter. Seriously, that's a hole in my soul right now. I have no portable device to really play a shooter on. It doesn't really work great on the DS. It doesn't really work great on the iPhone and the iPad. Now I can have something to play shooters on, and that's really important to me. For me as a hardcore gamer, the fact that I can get a shooter on a portable is awesome. To some degree, we have something to demonstrate to the PlayStation audience that we, lo we love the platform. You know, I've got three of them in my house that we care about this platform a lot, and we do, and we intend to do that.